This video is designed to highlight some of the most useful configuration options in EMISWeb, specifically focusing on clinicians. We'll cover configuration options on the home page, in the care record, in workflow manager, and in the appointment book. The quick launch menu has a default set of quick links to some of the most commonly used EMIS modules. You can add to and remove these links by selecting the cog icon in the top right hand corner of this section. The dialog box that appears contains the links that are available to you based on your user permissions, so what's available in this dialog box will vary from person to person and role to role. To add a link into the quick launch menu, find and select it in the left hand panel. I'm going for Patient UK. Click on Add and the option will appear in the right panel. To remove an option, select it in the right panel and click on Remove. When you've finished, click on OK and here we see the Patient UK option now appearing in our Quick Launch menu. In a similar vein to the Quick Launch menu, at the very top of the screen is the Quick Access Toolbar. Unlike the Quick Launch menu that's only available on the home page, the Quick Access Toolbar is available at the top of the screen from everywhere within the EMIS system. This toolbar contains a set of icons by default for every user. Those being Return to Previous Page. This is a useful shortcut if you just want to go back to the previous page you were on without having to navigate through the system. Return to Home Page, as you would expect, always brings you back to this home page. Send a screen message. This opens a dialog box which lets you type in a short message. Notice the limit of 500 characters. Mark it as urgent if you want to and then direct it to any user or multiple users by selecting them from the list of users who are online. You can include users who are offline when sending a screen message and the message will appear when they next log in. All messages appear in yellow banners across the top of the recipient's screen. If urgent, the message also appears in the middle of the screen and can be viewed from here. These yellow bars appear when there is something that you need to be made aware of. This one's telling me I have a screen message, but they could appear for a variety of other reasons. To view the message, click on the text in the yellow bar. Users can reply to messages, in which case you will receive the reply as a yellow banner message at the top of your screen. Note that if I try to get rid of a message by clicking on the red cross, then I'll be advised that this will delete the message permanently. The last default icon in the quick access toolbar is the patient find icon. Patient find dialog box is used to find any patient currently registered, inactive or deceased a separate video goes into more detail about efficiently finding patients using Patient Find and Patient Trace. Let's look at how the Quick Access Toolbar can be configured for each user. To the immediate right of the icon bar is a small down arrow. Select this and then select Customise Quick Access Toolbar. The model is similar to the Quick Launch menu model. Pick an option from the left hand panel and select Add or pick an option from the right hand panel and select remove. Commonly selected options are, for example, add a new user task, appointment book, consultations, lock session, mentor online, patient UK and population reporting.
Now that configuration is complete, you can see the new icons displayed in the Quick Access toolbar across the top of the screen. Hovering over each icon will show a tooltip describing what it links to. Care Record Config includes a number of user-level configuration options. Firstly, let's look at Consultation Styles. These are the options that appear when you're in the care record and opt to add a consultation. As you can see here, we have a selection of styles. These styles are governed at organisation level and can be linked to default to a specified template, for example, like the joint injection style. Here, you can see how if you select joint injection as your consultation style, it loads the joint injection template immediately as configured. This is a really useful feature for clinicians running clinics where all appointments are for the same purpose. Minor surgery and anti-coag clinics would be other suitable examples. When looking at the configuration options, at individual user level, you're restricted as to what you can edit. If we look at the joint injection style in user options, you can see that the majority of elements are greyed out as these cannot be edited by individual users. However, some elements can be edited for your own use, although these have limited relevance in primary care. You can change your default style from consultation to something else, and you can show the extended properties option box by default when adding a consultation. Possibly the most useful element of this configuration option, however, is the ability to tailor which styles are available to you and to remove any that you will never use. This is done by selecting from the available styles list and using the green arrows to move either the single selected style or all the styles over to being active or vice versa. Here, as an example, I'll remove all the styles apart from the standard consultation enterprise consultations and the joint injection styles. Note that I'm leaving enterprise consultations in place as this is key to using remote consultations in EMIS. So if in doubt, leave enterprise consultations as an active style. Notice the red arrow to the left here. This is used to revert all your selected consultation styles back to the original setting just in case you need to. Now, when I go into the consultation tab and select add, you see that these are the only three options that appear for me. Consultation synonyms can be taught to the EMIS system to save you time when typing text into consultation records. For example, instead of having to type in patient happy with explanation and plan, we can teach the system that when we type in happy, this should be replaced with patient happy with explanation and plan. It's also possible to create a synonym that adds a code as opposed to free text. We could therefore teach the system that when we type angstep, the code for anxiety and depression is to be added to the record. We have an option here to either insert the full wording or code automatically, but bear in mind that this will automatically replace the word happy with this description, even if that's not your intention and you're just typing the word happy in another context. A safer option, particularly if you're using a real word as a synonym, is for you to be prompted with a synonym and be able to manually select to include it. This option will display a tooltip when you've typed in happy and you can either continue typing to ignore the synonym or press enter to use the synonym. It's important to note that you cannot use the same synonyms differently at user level and at organisation level, so it's sensible to work up a set of organisation level synonyms at your practice that are available for everyone and then for individual users to create any others that they wish to use. Synonyms that are configured at organisation level are displayed with an organisation icon and are greyed out. The option to edit or delete these is not available at user level.
The personal dictionary lets you teach the image system words that you use regularly but that won't appear in a standard dictionary, for example names of local hospitals. By adding the words to your personal dictionary, they will not be picked up by the spell checking functionality which is used in consultations. Autocorrect lets you configure words that you commonly mistype or spell incorrectly by adding them here. The EMIS system will autocorrect them when you type them into consultations in free text. Clinical views are the options in the ribbon of the Care Record Summary page. You can customise which of the available pre-configured clinical views appears in your tailored Care Record Summary. Select a view to either add or remove and use the green central arrows to move that view. I'll remove the diabetic view here and if we return to the Care Record Summary page we can see that that view is now not an option in the ribbon. You also have the option to make one of the other views your personal default. Consultation history. When adding consultations, you're presented with a list of headers down the left-hand side of the consultation record. By default, the EMIS consultation order is used, where problem is at the top, followed by history, social, examination and so on. Each organisation can customise the order at organisation level, but it's also possible to change the order in which these headers appear for you as an individual user. In this section, you can select the consultation order, the organisation order, or go for my order and use the green up and down arrows in the preview section here to move the headers into your preferred order. The final user level configuration option here is the sharing navigator. The Sharing Navigator is a panel that appears in the Care Record if your organisation has EMIS data sharing agreements in place and active with any other organisations, such as extended access hubs or community services, for example. The Sharing Navigator displays which organisations are sharing with your organisation and enables you to select which organisation's data you wish to view. Having the panel open by default acts as a useful prompt to remind you that there is other data available for the patient and this can be configured here. Bear in mind though that if there is no shared data available for the active patient the panel defaults to being collapsed regardless of this configuration. Workflow Manager has a few useful configuration options that might make your life easier. You can set an out-of-office message to be sent to anyone sending you tasks or messages. If you're out of office, it's recommended that you configure one or more deputies to receive your incoming communications during your absence. If you try to set your out-of-office message and you have no deputies enabled, you will receive a warning just making you aware that you have no deputies in place to receive your communications. The options to create these deputies are here, as well as the option to enable your deputies. You can create different deputies for different modules. So all your tasks, document management and referral management comms, for example, get sent to one deputy. And I could add other deputies for other types of task. The default send to option allows you to configure which individual or team you wish the different types of task to be sent to. For example, if you create a book appointment task, always send it to your practice receptionist's team. Note that you can also pick the patient's usual GP as the recipient.
The Task Toolbar Settings option lets you configure which task counts are displayed across the top of your screen when not in Workflow Manager. These are the displays that run just above the Patient Pracy bar and let you see whether you have any items in each of your Workflow Manager inboxes and how many of these are marked as urgent. For example, we can see here that I have two SCR items, 40 documents and nine lab reports, three of which are urgent. The Appointments Book also has a wide range of configuration options at user level. Let's go straight to the most useful option. New Consultation Most consultors find this option particularly useful and time-saving. Set the New Consultation option on a registered patient send-in to Start New Consultation. Do this by clicking on the blue underlined option to the right to toggle this means that when you select send in on a patient's appointment slot, EMIS will automatically open up a new consultation for that patient. When the consultation is then saved, EMIS will return you to the appointment book and mark that patient as having left. In your slot settings, you can configure which information items you want to be displayed in columns alongside each slot of your appointment book. Status, time and description are automatically displayed and you can't change the order in which they appear either, but the other columns will appear in the order in which they're selected here. Tick here if you want the EMIS number to always be displayed next to the patient's name in each appointment slot. This option governs whether the details of the patients who are late are coloured red to alert you. And show waiting times for patients, if selected, will display waiting times in brackets next to each patient's name in the appointment slot. So this has summarised some of the most useful configuration options within EMIS for clinicians and you will have noticed as we worked through this video there are other options available that you can explore. That concludes this video. Have a go at a few of these quiz questions to see how much you can remember.